hey hi friends welcome to today's video so today we are going to discuss about persistent storage so it is the most common question that is asked in any ios interview so today's video will be focusing on what are different options that is available on the persistent storage and we'll see the implementation of user defaults and keychain i'll explain about core data in my next video today's video will be more focused on user defaults and keychain so let's now come to the topic what is persistent storage so whenever you want to save data in your application that should exist even when you kill the app so those kind of stories comes under the persistent storage and there are lots of huge cases let's say that the common example you see your facebook app so once you log in what happen next time even if you kill the app and you again launch the app you don't need to again enter the username and the password so the facebook app remembers you some way that you are logged in and then it actually show you the home page so there the facebook app is using some sort of persistent storage now there are multiple ways of doing persistent storage in ios app the easiest and the most common is use user defaults okay so what is basically a user default so if you see the apple's documentations so basically this user defaults class provides a programmatic interface for interacting with the default system so for example that let's say that if you want to save a simple boolean variable that whether the app has been launched for the first time or not so in that case i can save a boolean variable in my user defaults and that value will remain into my memory until unless the application is not deleted okay so user defaults is basically used for like you can say some sort of preferences switches some sort of preferences flags and some small sets of data like maybe some small some string some boolean variable or even some model like struct or classes but you cannot directly store struct in classes you have to convert into data so these are the some some simple use cases of user defaults okay now let's see how we can implement user defaults in swift ui using the swift ui approach many of you who comes from the ui kit background we used to write something like user defaults stored standards but in swift ui we have a better approach using the uh, at the rate app storage property wrapper so we'll use it and see the implementation so let's have a look so let me just write few codes so that i can just show my ui so what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to define a variable with a keyword call app storage. Okay. And let's say that here. So each user default, basically it saves like in a dictionary format. So you have to provide a key and then for that key, you will have a value. So let's say that I'm going to save my email ID. So I'm just going to give my key as email and then where I'll just call it as saved email value and it all depends on you whether you want to give some initial value whether you want to you know, provide initial value as nil I just want to provide the initial value as let's say that any so that I can just show in my UI that the value is not present okay now let's come to the UI part so I have taken a V stack and there inside that I have taken a group so this takes it just for my heading and then I'll taking a text field where I can enter some data to actually save it. And here I'll give some default placeholder. So let's say enter email and then I have to bind it. So let me define a property which I can just bind it here. So enter rate state. private where and I'll just call it as email value and this initial value will be empty so I'll just bind this with my text field and then I will have a button I'll just call it as save email and action will be very simple I will be just assigning my email value to my user defaults value and see as simple as it is to use a user defaults okay and then to just use it i'll use another text where i'll be just showing my saved user 
or saved email value okay so i'm done with the code now let's run this app so you can see that it's printing any because i don't have any value in my user default so let me just write my email id and now i'll click on save email and then you can see that this is saved now let me stop the app and launch it again and let's see that if i can see the value or not and you can see that the value is saved okay now sometimes you might be wa wanting that where actually this value is getting saved okay now we can easily see where actually this user default is getting saved in our app memory okay and for that i have to just write a small piece of code so let just write that somewhere so what i'm going to do let me create a view model class where i can just write some piece of code so i'll call it as content view model and uh, so here i'll just write i'm not using this view model i'll just use it to write my code to print actually that where this user default is getting saved okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to take path equals to ns search path for directory in domains and then you have to give the directory as dot library directory then this we can give our dot user domain mask and this we can pass as true and we have to get the first path of this so i'm going to just print this path and i'm not going to do anything with this class i'm just creating a object so that my class gets initialized and once it's get initialized it is going to call init method and it's going to print this path for me okay so let me run the app again and see what path is getting printed so see now i have the path for it so now what i'm going to do i'm going to click on search and here you can see this is a folder which it's showing for me okay now if you see here we have a library folder and then here you have multiple folder again and then here you can see that in the preferences folder you have this plist okay now once you click on this plist you can see that right now it is just having one key which is email so this was the key that i used to store my value okay and then the value is ios2.block at gmail.com okay so user defaults is basically used for small sets of data and now you might have seen that this is basically stored inside your sandbox area see this is inside my application sandbox so if i delete this application let me just delete this application so now i have deleted it and if i run it again now you will not see that value because you might have heard this terms called sandbox area so whenever you install an application it it's create a sandbox space for each application as each app has its own sandbox area and this is your default plist what you just have seen it is stored in that sandbox area so that sandbox area remains until unless the app is there so once you delete it sandbox area is also deleted and that's the reason that we don't see the value here okay so remember this point that the life scope of the user default is until unless the app is not uninstalled so if it is uninstalled your user default is gone okay. now see the same thing for keychain wrapper so you can see that the keychain is the base place to store small secrets like password and cryptographic keys so keychain in sort is more secure than user defaults because if you see just now i showed you that how can i access my user default so if i can access that means anybody can use there are lots of third party software where you can do reverse engineering of your ip and you can see the files contained inside it so let's say that if i'm trying to save my username password in the user default then anybody can not anybody somebody can see it who have that software and who have that intention to hack your application okay but if you store in the keychain the one thing is that keychain is is encrypted it's a database which is encrypted and so if you delete a application the information that is saved in the keychain is not deleted 
because keychain is not stored in your sandbox area it is stored somewhere outside the app okay so in some secured place so that's why if you have to store something very uh, important like username your password some sort of access token or uh, client id secret key those things you can store in the keychain wrapper but remember that the keychain will even remain once the user uninstall the app and then you can have some scenario let's say that for example if i am logged into my app okay and now once i log in i my username and password is stored and now what happens i just deleted the app and i give the phone to somebody else now he installed the same app now what will happen even if you install the same app if i am storing the username password so that that is still there for that particular app also so in that case you have to take extra care that if the app is uninstalled and you have installed like some oh, secret information then you can take some boolean variable like no i can take some boolean boolean variable like it whether it is a first launch or not so if the first launch is false that or if the first launch is true that all depends on how you want to maintain it you can flush your data in the keychain now let's see that how we can implement this keychain so i'm not going to write uh, whole code for the keychain and see that there are a lot of third party which are available and one of the popular is this keychain access so i'm just going to use it and show it to you so let's first include this so i'm just going to use swift package manager for dependency injection there i have to go for package dependency add plus type then just click on add package so it will take some time to fetch so basically what it is doing it is fetching the whole repository from there and then i can add it and now i have the keychain okay now let's do this in a swift way not uh, swift ui way not the the way how we were doing it in the ui kit so the way how i'm doing it that i'm using a property wrapper for my app story like my user defaults so behind the scene even the iterate app storage is using the user default dot standards what actually we were doing in the ui kit so let's try to write the same similar code that we can do for the keychain wrapper also so here i go so my keychain wrapper is ready so i'm i have imported the keychain access and if you see here i'm trying to get the keychain value if it exists and i'm also setting the value once the keychain value is set okay so that way it will work you don't need to call any extra method to uh, set the item in the keychain so whenever there is a value change it will automatically call this set here okay now let's try to use it the same way how we have used our app storage so i'm just going to copy these two property here and then let's call this time as username or it is more secure so let's call it as password and then this will be password value key i'm giving it as a password and then i'm just creating one more group calling it as pass uh, keychain wrapper so enter password see password and then we have to bind it my code is done now let's run this app again so as i've already deleted so you neither see uh username or uh, email id and now neither you will see the password okay so both are coming as any any so i'll just write the email id again and then i'll click on save email so my email id is now saved in the user defaults and then in the keychain wrapper i'll give the password as 129 and click on save password okay now let me stop the app and just open it again so you can see that both the user defaults and the keychain wrapper both are reading the value properly okay now let me do one thing more that let me delete the app and now run the app again so what happened both the value gone so 
I have done a mistake that I'm not saving it into my app keychain wrapper instead of that I was saving it in the app storage only okay so let me do one thing let me run the app again so this time no value so let me save value again and then here password save okay now stop it then run it again i have both the value with me okay now i will be deleting this app and now let's run the app again so this time if you see my password is there with me but my user default is gone okay so that was all about today's video so hope no next time that when you are asked about this persistent storage you can clearly tell about what is user defaults what is keychain what is the difference between those two and when to use keychain over user defaults in my upcoming video i will be discussing about core data core data is a big topic i will be discussing about code core data core data relationship multi threading everything so if you have not subscribed the channel please do subscribe and if you have really liked this video please leave your feedback thank you